Venezuelan citizens continue their protest against Nicolas Maduro. More on the story. A heroic student lost his life saving others. A blistering exchange happened on Capitol Hill. More on that coming up. Plus, how much longer will the clouds be around in San Diego? Find out more in weather. New scene starts right now. Welcome to this episode's uh, uh, new scene. I'm Kenyatta Rigmaiden. And I'm Shonda Walker. There has been a lot of controversy in Venezuela. Our very own Yakira Delgadillo has more on the story. That's right. What you see behind me is a San Diego naval station similar to the one in Venezuela that has been under controversy this week. Self-proclaimed President Juan Guaido called for a military uprising which has resulted in a protest across the nation. Nicolás Maduro has stood his ground and continues his position as Venezuela's elected president. And after a week of violence and protest, he continues to be the nation's president. It all began on Monday when opposition leader Leopoldo López was freed by Juan Guaido from the Carlota Naval Base. Guaido called for a military uprising known as Operación Libertad to overthrow Maduro as president. We are going to continue on the streets until we reach the freedom of Venezuela. According to reports, the Venezuelan Secret Service and Guaido, along with high-ranking U.S. officials, confirmed that Maduro would leave Venezuela for Cuba, but was advised not to by Russia. With a failed attempt to remove Maduro from power, Venezuela's military commander has pledged loyalty to Maduro. And Maduro quickly denounced all the traitors in the uprising. To all the military personnel in Carlota who pretended to be robbed and assaulted, Visiting City College, Gloria Larriva, who is on a national speaking tour about the crisis in Venezuela, says the plan to overthrow Maduro is a plot by the U.S. to control the oil-rich country. It's an all-out economic war. It's intended to make the people suffer, to try to force them to overthrow the government. It's called genocide, and it's a pattern that the United States has engaged in. As for Maduro, some question why he has not arrested the opposition leader after accusing him of trying to stage a coup. Some believe he is avoiding foreign intervention by the U.S. and other nations that recognize Guaido as Venezuela's rightful leader. And in breaking news, Juan Guaido has called for more peaceful protests starting tomorrow morning. Shots also have been fired on the Venezuela-Colombian border at the Simón Simon Bolívar Bridge. This is according to a Twitter newsfeed, and images have surfaced of a U.S. Navy plane along the Venezuela coast. We'll make sure to keep you updated as the story develops. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Yakira. Students at the University of North Carolina in Charlotte are mourning the loss of classmates in a deadly shooting. 21-year-old Riley Howell was in anthropology class when a gunman burst into class. Howell made the decision and tackled the gunman and lost his life while saving others. Charlotte's police department is calling him a hero. Former student, 22-year-old Tristan Terrell, has been charged with two counts of murder and four counts of assault with a deadly weapon with the intention to kill. He is being held without bail and scheduled for a bond hearing later this month. A terror plot was foiled by the FBI involving a U.S. Army veteran in Los Angeles. 26-year-old Mark Stevens Domingo was arrested for plotting to bomb the, a White House supremacist rally in a Long Beach that never occurred. Domingo was arrested after accepting devices he thought were pressure cooker bombs. Domingo recently converted to Islam and was seeking revenge for the New Zealand mosque attacks that occurred in March. New York's governor is defending an investigation of the National Rifle Association by his state's attorney general. Governor Cuomo said the investigation into the NRA as finances was justified after President Trump claimed it was illegal in a tweet. Trump received $30 million from the NRA during his 2016 campaign. Earlier this week, NRA President Oliver North announced he was stepping down, accusing CEO Wayne LaPierre of financial mismanagement. New York Attorney General Letitia James campaigned on the investigation, the NRA calling it a terrorist organization in an interview. 
Cities across the globe are recovering after violent May Day protests on Wednesday. In Paris, demonstrators broke windows and threw projectiles at the police, who reacted by spraying water cannons and tear gas over 38 partisan protectors, were injured along with 13 cops. Arrests were made in Berlin, St. Petersburg, Sweden, and Istanbul. Every May, first labor activists around the world protest against unfair working conditions. A security grant for the Poway Synagogue involved in last week's deadly shooting came too late. The Shabbat of Poway received a federal grant for increased security in late March, but it didn't get a chance to implement the grant before the shooting Saturday. The synagogue was approved for $150,000 to install gates and more secure doors, but is now asking to use part of the money to hire security guards. Yesterday, the White House hosted a national day of prayer honoring the heroes of the attack. After Wednesday's blistering Senate hearing, Attorney General William Barr was a no-show on, on Thursday. New scenes Jeffrey Villegas has more. Attorney General William Barr did not show up for a Senate hearing on Thursday, which called for multiple subpoenas. Democrats accused Barr of misleading Congress and causing public confusion with his summary of the Mueller report. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said that Barr committed a crime when he lied to Congress, but Barr told the Judiciary Committee on Wednesday that he did not misrepresent the report, despite Mueller's complaints in March. In a letter to Barr, Mueller wrote, The summary the department sent to Congress and released to the public did not fully capture the context, nature, and substance of this office's work and conclusions. This is in stark contrast to the testimony Barr gave in a House hearing last month. Democratic senators put Barr on the hot seat, calling his integrity into question. This is what Barr had to say. We released that. I, I offered uh, Bob Mueller the opportunity to review that letter before it went out, and he declined. Are you and I asked him if he was suggesting that the March 24th letter was inaccurate, and he said no, but that the press reporting had been inaccurate. Barr canceled his testimony on Thursday, which resulted in some political theater complete with props. Congressman Stephen Cohen brought a bucket of fried chicken as well as a plastic chicken, which they placed behind Barr's name card in front of his empty seat. Some speculate that this is all political grandstanding, while many Democratic senators have called for Barr's resignation. I'm Jeffrey Villegas, New Scene. Even though the Mueller report has been made public, the battle between Congress and the executive branch is heating up. Joint Chiefs of Staff Head General Joseph Dunford said the fight against ISIS is not over. This follows the Sri Lanka attacks that left over 250 dead with the leader of ISIS discussed in a new propaganda video this week. Abu Bakir al-Baghdadi hadn't made a video appearance in five years and was reported dead in a 2017 Syrian airstrike. In the video, the ISIS leader acknowledges losing territory in Iraq and Syria, but claims influence over groups in multiple countries. ISIS will continue operating underground like al-Qaeda. Coming up, find out what international ruling could affect the future of women's sports. An attorney for a Navy SEAL accused of war crimes has, has fled. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. The Department of Homeland Security will be performing DNA tests at the border to confirm individuals are related. The pilot program is intended to prevent adult migrants from fraudulently representing children at the border as well as their own to gain into entry into the U.S. Last month, 29 cases of fraud were confirmed. confirmed excuse me. DHS officials say that the test will be voluntary and not used to prosecute. 
A Navy petty officer was just sentenced to nine years in prison for a car crash that took place on the Coronado Bridge last year. The crash killed four people and injured seven others. The driver, Richard Sapolio, was under the influence. His sentence included four counts of vehicular manslaughter and one count of DUI causing in injury. Over 200 women jockey players will sit out the upcoming National Women Hockey League season in protest. The, different, the players from different teams and countries pulled together in a united front in less than a month. Many of the professional women hockey players are only earning $2,000 a season without receiving benefits of any kind. The NWHL will not share its revenue or budget details, which has been a huge problem for the NWHL Players Association. So we want to know how our San Diego Knights are currently doing in the competitions. How are we doing, Edgar? I'll get to that in a moment. But first, a new ruling on the gender identity of a world champion would have a major impact on the future of sports. Two-time Olympic champion Castor Semenya lost her court case to compete as a woman. Semenya is hyperandrogenic, which means her testosterone levels are higher than the typical female. The new international policies require athletes with this disorder to reduce their testosterone levels if they want to compete. The court stated that the policy is discriminatory, but necessary for preserving the integrity of female athletics. Meanwhile, in soccer, Lionel Messi just made soccer history. The 31-year-old Argentinian just scored his 600th goal in the Barcelona-Liverpool match. This makes him the second person after Cristiano Ronaldo to reach this achievement. Ronaldo uh, scored his 600th goal only four days earlier. The goal isn't without controversy, however, as a new online petition currently aims to ban Messi from soccer for allegedly punching Liverpool's Fabinho in the face during the match. In other soccer news, the U.S. women's soccer coach Jill Ellis has finally unveiled the roster of players that's going to defend the world title in the FIFA Cup next month. The roster's biggest surprise is the inclusion of Morgan Bryan, who has been suffering from injuries for the past two years. Other selections, like four-time World Cup veteran Carly Lloyd, are more obvious team additions. However, what options are right and what options are wrong will ultimately be determined when the tournament finally begins in France in June. From the field to the local court, City College's women's badminton team just played against uh, the reigning state champs Pasadena Lancers earlier this week. Our Knights in black, though they only had five out of the traditional six-member team, still managed to get ahead as they went into the final doubles match. Ultimately, though, the Knights lost the final doubles match, and with it the game, the Knights fell 12-9 to the Lancers. Pasadena will go on to face Fresno in an attempt to win its third st straight state championships next Thursday. However, there is still a chance to get to uh, the championships for the beach volleyball pairs, who compete in the South Isle Regionals in Irvine. A total of 10 pairs are competing. From there, the Knights will hopefully move on to the state championships next week in Chula Vista. As for the badminton pl players, they actually too have a chance to compete for the state championships as individuals next week. So hopefully they'll win. Go Knights! From badminton to parkour, our city has built a new playground, specifically for those of you who love to jump, climb, and flip from structures. The parkour park has been built in Carmel Valley as part of the new Pacific Highlands Ranch Park. While the park has been built to the public since, has been open to the public since April, it'll be officially battle tested by dozens of parkour practitioners, or tracers as they are known tomorrow. Among the attendees will be professional tracers such as SD City College student Mike Will. The parkour meetup will begin at 4 in the evening. Well, that's all the time we have for sports this week, but make sure to tune in next week to find out the latest wins and losses. Now back to the desk. Thanks a lot for that, Edgar. Well, there's some surprising news about population growth here in California. Stay tuned to find out more. Find out which of our celebrity couples got hitched this weekend in entertainment after the break. Calls me googly eyes. And you know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. 
we put it out there, it just took off. Three million people have shared this post. <laughs> Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. My <laughs> whole family's wearing glasses. I wear glasses, and I'm proud. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. California is experiencing a slowdown in population growth as our state approaches the 40 million mark. The state's Department of Finance released a report Wednesday that says the overall growth rate in 2018 dropped to its lowest since 1900. State officials have cited several reasons that could explain the slowdown, including lower birth rates, changes in immigration patterns, and the rising cost of living causing residents to relocate. Despite this, California is expecting to have 50 million people living here by 2055. Just in time for summer, San Diego is spending $2 million to repair its community pools. Mayor Kevin Faulkner announced today that work begins on five of the pools. According to the San Diego Union Tribune, all but one of them open in time for the busy summer months. City Heights Swimming Center needs more extensive repairs. It will not reopen until 2020. Norway fishermen have captured an alleged Russian military spy, and the spy is a whale. The beluga whale found off Norway's coast was wearing a suspicious-looking harness. The harness had mounts on it for cameras and was labeled with the name of a Russian city, St. Petersburg. The whale seemed tame and playful, and it would often come up asking for food and tug on ropes hanging from boats. After the whale was free from his harness, it swam off to do its thing. Looking into getting your lashes done? Look no further. Here is Jesus Lopez with the latest buzz around campus. Beauty is in high demand. According to a recent Nielsen study, the popularity of eyelash extensions has surged over the past year. San Diego City College has launched a 16-week training program in the cosmetology department for students to look into work in the eyelash extension industry. Lead instructor Kim Shawanka says the eyelash extension certificate gives the students the opportunity to learn the fundamentals of eyelash extensions within a short period of time and for far less cost than private programs. Our program is 16 weeks, so it's two eight-week courses, um, starting with uh, the foundational course and then an advanced course. So each one is eight weeks long. Mr. Edwards is the spa lead and assists students in their efforts to learn classic everyday look. We just do a classic lash. So what you're going to get with a classic lash is something that looks very natural, very um, streetwear, and uh, we also offer it at, at a really affordable price too. Sir Wonka says the purpose of the program is for her students to make a career into the growing beauty industry. Uh, we have so many clients coming in um, for that service. Our students, uh, most of our students are already getting the service done. They were getting the service done before they even came here. So this is wonderful for them to be able to not only uh, work on each other, uh, be certified for it, and bring it right out into our industry. For New Scene, I'm Jesus Lopez. And remember, real friends don't let friends have little lashes, so book your appointments now. A California woman watching Avengers Endgame may have exposed hundreds of people in a theater to the measles. The unidentified woman had just returned from an international trip when she went to the movies in Fullerton last Thursday. The woman is currently in isolation at her home. More than 700 cases of measles have been reported nationwide. This is the highest number since the, the disease was declared eliminated in 2000. Well, we have some exciting music tours coming here to San Diego. Find out more. Here's Sarah with entertainment. Thank you. Singer Joe Jonas and actress Sophie Turner surprised fans by getting married this week. The lovers couldn't wait, so they went to a Las Vegas chapel less than two hours after the Billboard Music Award ended. News of the wedding spread after Diplo posted several videos on his Instagram story. Diplo tagged the pair in a video showing Turner in a veil and holding a bouquet of flowers. With the caption, true love, 
clips from Diplo Instagram Live surface on Twitter. Jonas is well known from DNCE and his brother band, the Jonas Brothers. Turner is best known for her role as Sansa Track in Game of Thrones. The newlyweds will have a formal wedding in France later this year. Congratulations to the lovebirds. San Diego is the top tour stop for music artists in 2019. This week, the Jonas Brothers announced their reunion tour, Happiness Begins, which will play at the Panchata Arena, formerly the Bally View Casino, on October 17th. Former Blink-182 band member Tom DeLong also announced a reunion tour with his other band, Angels and Airwaves, which will be in San Diego at the House of Blues on October 5th. And finally, Van Morrison tour, The Prophet Speaks, will be stopped in an, the Northern Island Credit Union Amphitheater on October 5th. The Avengers have dominated the box office with Avengers Endgame. Don't worry, we're not going to give any way uh, a spoilers. The Marvel Studios film had the biggest global box office opening in history last weekend with 1.2 billion. The weekend results for an Endgame surpassed its preceders Avengers Infinity War for both the biggest global and domestic openings ever. It made almost twice the announced amount Infinity made, War made globally and 100 million more domestically. If you want to stop avoiding spoilers, Avengers Endgame is still out in theaters. That's all I have for entertainment. Now back to the desk. Thanks for that, Sarah. Well, strong winds, heavy rain, tornadoes, and hail is in the forecast for parts of the U.S. Find out more after the break. How much longer will those clouds be around in San Diego? Find out more in weather after the break. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Slow moving storms are wreaking havoc across the southern states. The National Weather Service says the heaviest rainfall is expected to hit Texas. The frontal system expands from southern Texas to northern Illinois. Millions are bracing for floods with watches and warnings. Recent heavy rainfall and melting snow have already flooded Davenport, Iowa, where the already swollen Mississippi River pushed through a temporary barrier. It's been pretty cloudy out there. Will we have sun this weekend, Joel? Well, that is a good question to see about but before we get to local we need to get to national weather because there was a few things happening despite being a slow water week for starters in most of the in regions around texas and oklahoma there are a few flash flood warnings as you can see here in the map so around this region here on oklahoma city there are a few flash flood warnings but other than that not much you can see this here gust of stream storms so that's about that and you can see most of the country is in the 50s and 60s even though well it's may but other than that it's all inconsistent here sometimes the 70s like here in the south you can see all all 70s and 80s and the royals 50s and 60s both of arizona so unless you're in fairborn ohio you'll be you'll be freezing cold or maybe in tempe arizona who knows but that's how it is so it's not much but 50 60 so once again it's sweater water i guess but let's go local because you can see right now in San Diego at 61. And that's a pretty common theme throughout the entire county, unless you're in Borrego Springs. Most of the part is just 50s and 60s, and mostly it's due to the clouds. But before we get to that, you can see 50s, 60s, 59. In fact, the warmest spot right now would be Borrego Springs at 81. It's the only one in the 80s. Next best thing is Julian at 70, and everywhere else, 50s and 60s, especially around the coast. So see from Oceanside to Chula Vista, 60s and maybe 159. So it's just that kind of weather. Bubble is the eight day forecast. We have the bad news. 
because unfortunately the sun's gonna be out gonna be hiding for a while it's mostly clouds clouds and more clouds especially on monday where there's a 40 percent chance of rain unfortunately it seems really inconsistent with the weather because sometimes you'll see the sun but as the forecast shows you it'll be all clouds in some way or another especially on monday where there's a 40 percent chance of rain is that a good thing or a bad thing who knows thursday also shows chance of rain but eh, it, it may or may not happen monday especially since starting sunday night there might be a chance of rain and it might impact your monday but other than that you should have a great forecast especially this weekend because we have two holidays on saturday of course is the holiday for star wars fans may the 4th which means begins a law in california so on saturday may the 4th be with you and on sunday you can celebrate cinco de mayo the holiday celebrating the battle of puebla down in mexico so that's on Sunday. On Sunday, you can see we will have a, a partly cloudy with a high of 67 and low 59, especially in the coast and inland, 71, 55. So you should have fun partying at all the events around, around town in Cinco de Mayo, especially in Old Town, where I heard it's going to be a fun event. It starts tonight, in fact. But elsewhere, who knows? But right now, it's just clouds, unfortunately. So if you were planning to have a nice sunny day, you will, probably. It, it's just a sad thing, like just pure clouds, unfortunately. So, hopefully you'll have fun during your weekend doing all these things and prepare for Monday where, you never know, it may or may not rain, since 40% chance of rain does leave it a bit up in the air. But, for now, that is all for weather. Back to you at the desk. I hope you all have a happy Cinco de Mayo. Thank you very much, Joel. A cop in Baltimore has gone from busting bad guys to busting rhymes. I think that's good. Officer Joshua Jackson has been rapping longer than he's been a cop. Now the 25-year-old officer is combining the two passions and gaining fame. Jackson is, a, is rapping in a positive way in a city that is the second most deadly in the U.S. Respect the youth so they know that you don't necessarily have to turn to a gun. You know, that's pretty amazing to see a, a cop who raps, you know. A lot of times you think the crowd who likes to listen to rap is kind of anti-cop, you know, especially starting with N.W.A. back in the late 80s. Oh, you know? that was the time. This new music is wonderful, but the 80s and 90s, wow. I'm talking about those artists started it all, and that's great music. Well, we're lucky when we have a good artist out there, so hopefully this cop will bring some positivity to the field. So that's about all the time we have for this week's episode of New Scene. My name is Kenyatta, and I am Shonda Walker. Make sure to tune in next week for all of your local and national and international news. <laughs> Bye, folks.